everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And today we are talking about a subject that I adore, love, and would like to eat so much more of if my cholesterol could be a little bit more under control, but I'm still eating them because I love them, and that is cheese. Today we are Cheese Library TV, and if you've been to Wine Library in Springfield, New Jersey, you've probably seen the beautifully bearded man to the right of me right now. Everett, why don't you tell the Vaniacs who you are, what you do, and what we're about to talk about. Well, I'm Everett Presley, and I'm the manager downstairs. Um, pretty much if we sell it downstairs food-wise, it's because I've said we can sell it. Um, it's because I it's agree with the, with, the, with, the, with the flavor awesome. and you know, everything about it. So this is one of the really good cheeses we just started carrying. Um, it's a really special thing. It's a, a cheese Before from... Before you get into that, because oh. you know, I don't Sorry. like to give it all to them right oh, away. Okay. I want to tell little you exactly tease. how... A little tease. I like to tell you exactly how this show just came about. You know, I'm doing my shows, I'm taping, I'm working, and Everett, who's been here... What now, Everett? A year and a A little half? over a year and a half, yeah. Yeah. Um, flew into my door, like walked by, kind of like poked his head in. It's always great to see, you know, like, is this gorgeous or what? I mean, unbelievable. Anyway, and he's like, uh, you know, really excited. So I'm like, come in here as I'm sitting at my desk over there. And uh, he's like, we just got something that is like insanely hard to get, like waiting lists, like basically you told me my grandchildren were gonna actually get access to the cheese eventually. We got in there somehow, you know, the legend of Everett I think kind of helped. And uh, I'm excited about this. I mean, I love cheese. I was at Pichelin last night, which right. is a big cheese restaurant in New York. Um, why don't you tell the maniacs why we're so excited about this, what this whole scene is about? Well, th these three cheeses we have in front of us are from the Cowgirl Creamery in which California. Um, and the Cowgirls, um, it's Peggy and Sue. They actually were some of the very first women cheesemakers in the United States really bringing artisanal cheese into the forefront. Um, one of the beauties Did you just of their. Say Peggy and Sue? It's two different ladies. No, yes. I know. Yes, but Peggy, Peggy Sue is just like such a classic. True, you know? okay. it's Peggy. Yeah. So, Peggy and Sue, they are the che the the okay. cowgirls, um, but they are the ones who really kind of um, helping uh, artisanal cheese really come to the forefront in the American market. Um, and one of the, the other legends. Yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so much so that new cheese stores are basically stuck on a waiting list because they buy all their milk from the Strauss family dairy, which is an organic dairy that's down the road from them. So they, all the milk that they make their cheese with is from this one particular dairy that doesn't have that much milk. So the production of the cheese Why itself Why doesn't the dairy get more cows? Limited land, limited organic, they, they are all organic. So in order for them to put cows on extra land, that land already has to be certified as organic, otherwise it takes away their yes, entire organic sure, certification. Of I'm very familiar, so with, same with wine. Exactly, same with wine. So with these, we're dealing with three Three cheeses from the cowgirls. They're all made from organic milk from the Strauss uh, family dairy. Awesome. Um, we have two that are some of their most well-known, award-winning, have been since they've been out there. Uh, this multiple award winners, all three of these. Uh, we have the the Mount Tam and the Red Hawk, which people, uh, you know, if you've heard of cowgirl before, you know these two. And then we also have the Pierce Point, which is one of their seasonal. It's only made in the fall and winter time. It's actually Washington Moscato wine. I'm not sure actually which winery that's, that is. I'll have to talk with them and find yep. out for sure. But then it's also uh, coated in herbs from the um, that area in Northern California. So Mount Tam, Red Hawk are like traditionally the hot stuff. I mean, have you had the uh, luxury of tasting the cheeses in the past? I mean, yes. Is this in, um, well, actually, when I'd worked at Murray's, yep. um, which is an there, unbelievable cheese shop in New York City, we had that was the only place I've ever really worked at that had it. Um, I'm wanting to say maybe even when I worked at Whole Foods, we would get like one happened. every now and then, but it wasn't just like one of these. Like they'd yeah, come in, so basically, and you'd look at it like, oh my god, like. And even then, it would be because of the Whole Foods system. It would be too old. It'd be too ripe. So. These came in today. I ordered them on Monday, and they are We're all pumped. they're like insane. You want to run right downstairs now. and just start showing people it? I just want to know. I want to sit right here and eat all, <laughs> <laughs> these all right, right let's now. get into these because I'm excited. Let's taste some cheese. Um, where do you want to start? We're going to start with the Mount Tam. This is okay. their classic. All three of these are actually triple cream. So what you're looking at is basically... I love triple cream. They're kind Why of don't starting... you explain to the maniacs that don't know what triple and double cream is, what that, those terms are? Well, with triple cream, when if you milk a cow, you got a bucket of milk. As it sits there, that cream rises to the top. If you take three of those buckets, take cream from the two other buckets, and throw it into that third bucket that already has the cream in it, that's triple cream. Understood. But most people think that that means there's that much more fat in it. Which, yes and no. Part of the issue is this is still a really, Cut really young cheese. This still has a lot of water in it. So even though it has a lot of fat, the water is basically <sighs> diluting the overall concentration of that fat. Like a, hard, a hard cheese made with skim milk could actually have more fat in it per bite 
than this. That's pretty interesting. That is not something I realized. Now, see, he just jumped right into it. Now, how long can this age? Uh, these guys are on the younger side. I think they do get a certain date on them, but the, the amount of time beyond this, as young as this is, in three weeks, it's going to be just runny, gooey, a little fuller flavor. But ideally, and what if somebody me, cut this and let it sit on the table for three or four hours? Because I like when it gets real gooey, Everett. I want to be like, you know, like... If you want it really gooey, you're going to want to wait a little while before you actually cut into it. Because once you cut into it, you kind of broke it. You're in it. the you, game. You, you stop the you process. Pop the cherry. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's like pulling the cork. Yep. What's happening you're, inside you're the in. bottle is done. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You're, and and then basically that lifespan has so for somebody diminished. you know having you here you're such an expert you know I, I like learning myself I mean some of these things I already know but you know so when you see the date you you know or or wherever it is when do you start making your game plan I mean for you we just got this in did, did you want to like put a couple downstairs are you like in the mood to do that are we putting out or what's kind of the game? by the way this is ridiculous yeah it's a little mushroomy it's got oh, real deep butter going on in there. But as far as aging with something like this, this particular cheese, um, every single cheese is going to be different. You want some <laughs> and you, you, ha cheese. you have to, yeah, she's not a big fan. <laughs> but um, it's all about with this particular cheese, you can tell in the, in the texture of it. If you pick this up and squeeze it, right. if it feels like a gooey ball, it's either going to be it's either going to be almost too ripe or beyond. Right now, it kind of it feels a little supple, kind of springs back a little bit Come to you. A little, little more piece, just a little more. And, and, that's, and what does this sell for? Um, this is, uh, because of the demand and it gets the, yeah, because of the demand, yep. I think we're selling them downstairs, the Mount Tam, if I'm not mistaken, for Ball around $22, $23 a piece, which is about $10 less than some of the other sites you might find it for online. That's good. Um, we like so, to be that price. Yeah. But not a cheap cheese, but for obvious reasons. Very and, fungus driven, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of mushroom components. Absolutely. I mean, I really, I feel like I'm legitimately eating mushroom soup. I mean, mm -hmm. this is tremendous. I mean, so A creamy. really ultra creamy mushroom soup. Yeah, ultra creamy mushroom soup. You know, like camels. Mm -hmm. And, um, <laughs> wow, this is exceptional. It's like putting a little butter in your mushroom soup that's already pretty creamy. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has enormous complexities. To me, I, th I find that the texture... I like the graininess. The texture on the rind, rind is perfect. Because sometimes, when you have a, a bloomy rind of cheese like this, the mold actually produces ammonia as a byproduct. And so sometimes right. you'll end up with too much ammoniation or it, it tends to you know, seep into the cheese and makes a huge difference. With this one, you're not dealing with any of that ammoniation. Right when I cracked it open from the pack, I could smell just a hint of it. I think Bobby was actually commenting on, he was like, he's like, it smells like cat pee. And I was like, no, 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 it's not cat pee. It's just that little <laughs> hint of ammonia that gets trapped underneath Bobby the pack. Bobby loves New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. He thinks everybody, he's like, you smell like cat pee. What, Bobby? Oh, okay, all right, let's move on. Second cheese we're gonna go to. And that same family, like we said, still triple cream. This is the one that's washed in Moscato and then coated in herbs. So we're going to have a lot more flavor on this. And seriously, when I tasted this right before we started, it is ridiculous right you now. You tasted it before? I did. Jerk. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I had to make sure. Aromatically, this is far more uh, vibrant on the nose. I like how I'm treating it like a wine. Well, you should. I, I mean, mean, I treat everything like that. When I taste the olive oils and vinegars downstairs, I'm, I'm putting them in a wine glass and swirling them around, mm -hmm. getting the... On the nose, it's definitely more herbaceous, but you're still getting that same mushroom complexity that's coming through from the Mount Tam. Mm. We should really change the show to the Cheese Library <laughs> TV. I mean, this is fun. Mm. The herbs just come through so well in this. You know, sometimes if you're dealing with dried herbs and certain things, it'll tend to be really bitter or texturally, it almost, it'll almost be am like I, rosemary stabbing you I, in the roof of your mouth. Am I a purist by not being as pumped up about things that put herbs in it and like put things up, you know? Uh, you know, I, I kind of, no, not yeah. that I get turned off. Yes what and is no. that? Yes and no. I feel that, in my personal opinion, I feel that there are certain... And that's all certain, this is, remember? Just like wine, this no, is a palate game. Absolutely. Right? I feel that there are certain things that can be added that kind of fit into the realm of what could be, you know, and other what people should be like added. Pineapple, right? And then there, I mean, yeah, I can't knock certain certain cheesemakers, especially, I'm not going to knock any American cheesemaker because everything that they're doing is great, even if it doesn't have good results, just the fact that they're out there doing it is hustling. great. You know, but some, some of the combinations and flavor combinations it's, are a little better on paper than they are in practicality. Are you impressed, for the viewers out there, are you impressed with the hustle and the expansion and the excitement in the American, I mean... There's a complete explosion. Yes. And the last 10 years, it's been amazing. When I was in Chicago in August for the American Cheese Society uh, competition and the conference, the last day was an entire conference room, or not even, it was a banquet room, actually, Jeez. with 
1,200 different American cheeses. Now, a few of those were Canadian, a few of those were Chilean, but I would say That's probably... That's America. Yeah, it's still America. It's still America. It's the Americas. But over 1,000 cheeses that were made in the United States of all different sorts. And, uh, you know, we're not talking about block cheddars. We're talking about, you know, people with their five cows, with their 30 cows, with their 100 right. cows, going out making there milking, their their making their cheese. And be it right or wrong, it's what, you know, it's their passion... It's that drive that they've got because it's not a money-making business. No. I mean, the people that are out it's there passion. making the cheese, it's and all so about And so for a lot of wineries. I mean, there's so many similarities. Mm. All right? I mean, to me, mm. I think the Mount Tam was much more exciting for my palate. It was a little creamier. It could be just the aging on that end. I mean, is it, this is, I assume, is a triple cream as well. It's going to yes. be a cream. I can, you can, you can you always can tell by the outside, right? Get in here. Well, the, the outside, you can see in the ripening, it's in the action, the enzymatic action from the rind working its Going way in, in ripening right? in. You know, yep. If you were to let this, if you didn't cut it and just let it continue to ripen, the entire cut thing it. would eventually turn to a point where you could basically stick a straw through the rind and suck out the entire inside. It will get that ripe. I like, I like it's not going to be palatable at that point. No? No. Can I try that? Because you, you can know, try I've that. eaten dirt. Oh, absolutely. On national television. It's, it's going to be It's going to be a full, a whole different complexity, and it won't be exactly what the cheesemaker had intended. And, and that's one of the things the, that's really important with that American is cheeses, is that, you know, we can take it and change it and turn it into something else. It's still a good cheese, but if it's not exactly what that cheesemaker was intending, you know, we're kind of we're kind of skewing from exactly what they were trying to do. And that happens quite a bit with wine as well. I mean, you know, aging and what have you. A lot of the winemakers are in trouble now because they want to make wines that are drinking younger, earlier, because everybody's popping bottles. But with the cheese, it's that much more crucial because, you know, if this was a bottle of wine, you could set it on the shelf. No question. And it could sit there for a year and be sure. fine. This, I can set it, it out for fine, two days you know, from without going proper... It, I would be mad at it. Right. You know. No, exactly. <laughs> All right. So what's the suggested retail of this? Uh, it's still in that same price point. We're looking... Low uh, 20s. Right. Now, this Red Hawk, every time I see this kind of coloring and I see it's a triple cream, I'm getting ready for Stinky City USA. Yes and no. One of the beauties of Red You're Hawk... You're a very big yes and no guy. Is that like a big thing for you? You like going yes and no? I was about to say yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, yeah, I guess it is. All right, so let's guess. get into this one. Well, the beauty of is this, this one is... Is this the classic? Is this the first? Is. This, this is the one. This is like what put them on the map. This, yes. This is like their first Absolutely. single that put them on the scene and blew it up. Because they were one of the first one, first American cheesemakers doing a washed rind cheese. Right. That's something... Explain it's to a, the Baniacs washed wa rind. Because you rind, see that term quite a bit on cheeses. Washed rind, you're talking things, other cheeses that you would know. Limburger, Epoise, uh, Munster, the stinky ones. Um, and literally what it is is where you have the white mold growing on, on these, it literally is a bacteria that they're encouraging to grow on the outside. Uh, with this, is a, it's a penicillin candidum, and with this, you're talking about a bacillin's bacteria. Um, and literally, they're Science. using a, a salt solution to wash the outside <laughs> of it with that it, it will have an inoculation of that bacteria, and it encourages that to Makes grow. Mm -hmm. They will periodically, I'm not sure how often they do it, but most uh, places that are washing cheeses are doing it every day or every other day, where they're turning and actually using a brush or some sort of like a mister or that sort of thing and washing the outside of the cheese, keeping it wet, keeping it moist, where this is a fully dry, sure. this you're trying to keep it moist. And this is a fully dry pretty much, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's, and, I and can see, you can see the moisture still. But the cheese on the inside ultimately is about the same as far as the way it's being made, the recipes that they're using. I know they're, they're going to be different, but as far as it's still a triple cream, you're still dealing with some of the same things. But with that being washed rind, you're getting a little bit more that orange color, Anytime you have that orange color in the wash rind family is where a little bit more of that pungency, a little bit more barnyardiness, a little mm -hmm. bit more, you know, cow funk starts really kind of coming through. Sheep butt, as I call it. Right. But this would be a cow's butt because right. it's a cow. A cow butt. But, um, but definitely with the Red Hawk, I think the beauty of it is because it's a triple cream, the butteriness plays out the funk to a point where it's just perfectly balanced. Some cheeses bring just the funk. Which is and, fine. And, and which is fine, exactly. There are people that love that. I mean, I can say something that you know smells exactly like a cow's ass, and I have customers who be like, "I want that." And exactly. And you know when I go down, I'll exactly. And so this guy, I think, is perfect for people that want to have that kind of funk, but maybe you're having dinner or having wine or having cheese with someone that doesn't. This is one you can bring by. It doesn't offend the entire house. It's got enough of that complexity to really satisfy the people that want that kind of stinkiness, but at the same time, it's not too overwhelming for those that aren't used to that yet or you know, haven't gotten used to that. One kind thing of I, I found with this um, is it feels even more dominant on the palate than the other two. Oh, absolutely. It, you know, whereas this completely coated, mm -hmm. this is like, forget mm -hmm. about coating, this is looking to invade your life. 
It was coming through the nose. I feel like it's going mm -hmm. in my body and taking out my insides. Oh. Like it's, it's, it's a mean little mother. I mean, it just completely takes over the palate. Clearly, Burgundian type flavors. I mean, this is Minori. You know, like definitely like you come to you know the farmland USA and you give a good, and that taste you get in the mouth from the aromatics gets really into your palate. Ashy, it gets very ashy. Mm -hmm. I feel this is ashy. Well, there, it's still on the younger side. And I think some of that ashiness is actually coming through mainly in the texture more mm -hmm. than it is in the taste. I, you know, I actually taste like there was a fire okay. up in these parts, and I taste, you know, a little bit on the back okay. end of the palate. Now, that being said, one of the great things about cheese, like wine, which really gravitates me towards both products, I think, is this changeover, this journey, mm -hmm. right? Here we are tasting these today. Oh yeah, if we were having this tasting next week with the exact same cheeses, we'd have different results with each one of these cheeses. Because from next one week to the next, there's going to be a change. I'm not here It'll next week. Uh, I'm here next Thursday. Okay. I think we're going to tape again. All right. I'm not kidding. All we're right. going we're to mix it up. All right, I'll set some I'll set some of the same batch aside so we're tasting the exact same, same batch. batch Do it. aging. You think that's... Here we are on a Wednesday. That was, so will be next Thursday. We're Wednesday, right? Yeah. So you're excited about an eight-day turn. You're, you're feeling we're going to see some results. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Fun? I think so. Oh, definitely. You know, I'm going to tell you right now. Like I think I'm leaning towards the... Can you give me one more little piece? I think Mount Tam, as, and even though I'm a stinky guy, I think this Mount Tam really took it for me. Uh, I'm still stuck on the Red Hawk. Yeah, you're a Red Hawk sucker? Oh, uh, yeah. Just the, the, like I said, was saying, the, the balance of the funk with the creaminess to me is perfect. This is a little on the younger side. I mean, the density right on the dead center is a little drier than I would generally like. Mm -hmm. You'd probably like it. You'll probably like it next week once mm -hmm. it's had a little bit more time to kind yeah, of Yeah, it's probably the develop. creaminess, whereas this is a little, you see, mm -hmm. just a little creamier. Well, you're having a different enzymatic reaction. You're having a different action of ripening with the mold as opposed to the bacteria. So on the, the flip side, goes though, off different. The, um, just the purity, the flavor of, oh. the, of the tam is, and, but the hawks are a little more expensive. Yes. Hawks is a, a little larger size, um, and literally yeah. this is the hardest one to get. When I called up, they were like, well, you can have as many of these as you want. You can right. only have six of these. Everyone that was buying this week was like, limit six. six so we just wasted one. But not really, because no. we just enhanced the maniacs out there. Absolutely. I mean, this is something... It made me happy. I'm pretty pumped right <laughs> yeah. here, so. um, I don't know. To me, I'm going, at this moment, we're going to do this eight days later. A little follow-up. A real education, I think, for, um, for you um, on seeing how cheeses develop. Um, but right now, I'm clearly in the Mount Tam as the winner. Um, Red Hawk is a close second, but still a little bit distance. And, uh, you know, uh, the last place one, I'm sorry, what was the name of this one? The Pierce Point. Pierce Point. Liked it, but kind of meh for me right now. How about you? One, two, three. Wow. But this one, I want... Do you think this I is boring to you? Not boring, but I do sell a lot of triple creams. Right. And, and a lot a, of them taste like that. A lot of French. Uh -huh. This one definitely has its own complexity, but when it comes down to it, this has something special, unique. This one is just... Kind of a classic, yeah. No. Where this but is a copy sure? of a French sure? classic. Understood, and that's valid. And I love, you know, I love those French triple cream. So that's what I'm gravitating towards. Do you think you're treating this one possibly in your own line? This is kind of interesting, global, just for the wine and cheese world in general. Um, one thing I always said to myself was, my mom did such an amazing job in making me look at every person individually, and that's why I have a very diverse group of friends. It always helped me so much in wine. So when I had Chateau Latour or Lafitte or Opus One or all those wines, you know, I was always kind of like, pretty. Do you feel like? I mean, this is great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. Judge, but do you feel like you give this a little bit more respect because of its legendary status? Or just hits your palate properly? Um, or a mix of the two? <laughs> it's probably a mix of the two. Probably. Because like honestly, when I first got into cheese, I didn't know the legend, you know, the, the history and of it. it and I tasted and it, it and was like, wow, this that is something, you know. But now I, I can't say that I'm not skewed by that. That being said, this was the middle one and you didn't finish it. True. So that's kind of just, you know, little, oh, that, I, I sure look no. homes you a little there. No, no, you got me. That, that's an interesting little, you know, just it a It might little. be because I cut myself a larger slice off of that one, but. Also possible. Everett, yes. clearly, you know, I'm, I'm notorious for interrupting fans, but obviously I was engaged in what you, uh, fans, excuse me, uh, guests, um, what you had to say. Um, I'm a, this was fun. You know how much I care about where we're going with this. Um, guests on the show always ask a question a day. Fire away. Question of the day. Hmm. Well, he's whispering something into my ear here. But what is your favorite cheese? Curious. What do you want from me? I yeah. never get to ask questions today. Well, I actually do all the time. You! With a little bit of me, an outrageous cheese talent like this guy, the beard, we're changing the cheese world, whether they like it or not.